worksheets and assignment scripts. A pen. What are students using to write their composition? What are students using to do their homework assignments? A pen. Now you may wonder why am I asking you this question? Because today I am going to share with you the history of the pen. Some people might underestimate this this object. Some people see it as a as a mere tool. Some people see it as a as a testament to the human mind. Like what now? He's a writer. He writes his thoughts on paper like stories. And then look over here now. Now this is our generation. Lord Down was generations ago. Now we read his paper, and now we read his stories and join it. So, like pens, we have learned, we have come to appreciate them, but not all of us might. So today, I am here to help you appreciate these objects that are not merely tools. So let us see what is the first type of pen. These were used by the ancient Egyptians, Mesopotamians, and Greeks. The first type of pen was a reed pen. It was usually made of a plant stem or a reed, usually cut at the angle to produce a fine writing point. The ink was mainly made, used, made out of soot, vegetable juices, carbon, or water. This ink, so this was used to write on papyrus. So fast forward to the seventh century, to, to the seventh century, we we see our we see our ancestors write writing it with quills. This is the Middle Ages. We see them writing with quills. But what exactly is a quill? Mention if you how many of you have watched Harry Potter? If you have seen these movies, it most it mostly features a quill to write. Now a quill, as you might have seen, a quill is merely a feather. Now in the second book, it says that for, for Professor Lockhart's quill is a peacock feather. Yes, quills can come in many types. It can be a swan feather, a goose feather, or sometimes even a crow feather. I so they are quite fashionable. You can use a different type of quill for for each day. You can use a peacock quill, a swan quill, or a goose quill, or even a, a crow quill, as I just mentioned. Now let us fast forward to the 19th century. 19th century, we see ourselves using fountain pens. Now let us look at the significance of, of the significance of this pen. Before William Ferguson. We were using, we were still using quills, but after that, we were using fountain pens. Now, these were not the fountain pens that we see now, with the metal nib and the and the long plastic reservoir. This is not the the fountain pen used in those times. This featured a swan, a swan this featured a quill at the front and a reservoir inside. But then, this was not a entirely good a good pen. It all. It could leak frequently and also needed regular maintenance. So, so after that, one hero saved the world from this. That was Leslie Weibel, a Hungarian Argentinian inventor. He invented the world's first ballpoint pen. The ballpoint pen is now what maybe all of us use. So even I use ballpoint pens. They feature a nib, a ball at the front of the nib that picks up ink from the reservoir and transfers it from nib to from paper, from reservoir to nib to paper. Now the judges here may be write, may be writing on your papers. I don't know what you may be writing with. Perhaps perhaps a mechanical pencil, a gel pen, or a boy or a ballpoint pen. These pens are what we use every day. And let us and now let, let me get on with my history of pens. Now, now, now we use now there are also gel pens available. This gel pen has its has its ink in in like a bit of gel. So these gel pens, they write very smoothly because the gel which comes from the from this what I call the reservoir, it comes transfers to the paper. Now some of my friends might say writing with a gel pen is quite satisfying. True, even I think it's satisfying. Now, as you might see with roller, with roller ball pens, what is a roller ball pen? For some pens, like like a zebra pen, you can see that the ink behind is stored in a reservoir, but it's not a fountain pen. It's liquid ink, and then at the front, it's a it's a nib, a bit like this, but but only much different. So, what is that you ask? That is a roller ball pen. It features a very very small ball. It features a very small ball at the tip. 
and it picks up ink from the reservoir to write on the paper. Now, in the digital era, in modern context, we have the stylus. Now, I, I didn't know what the stylus was until I thought about, let's, let's do, let's, let me talk about the history of pens. So I had to search on Google, what is a stylus? As it told me, a stylus is a tool we, we merely write to, to write on tablets and phones. So this stylus can be used in many, in many areas. My, my Hindi teacher also uses a stylus to write on her computer, shares it onto my computer, and I can see what she's writing. This stylus is a testament of our technology, how we've came so far. So now, let us pick up our pens with pride. But they are not really at home. They are a testament of the human mind, the human will. We can write on paper, and generations to come can see our works and see and say, this is what our ancestors have done so far. Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so now, many of you might have a pen in your bag. So these pens are not just tools. Remember that every day you see a pen. They are not tools. They are a testament of our minds. Our ancestors have created that for us. But then they didn't create it willingly. They didn't know that our future generations must have a pen. Well, they didn't see our future generations if the, if the word generations existed in mind. So they thought that we need to find a tool to write. And that's exactly what they did. They found a tool, they used it, and here we are. Now, I am talking about the different types of tools they use now. Thank you for your attention and I am happy to answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs>